Hey there my friends, welcome to Gamers with Games. So this time around I'm going to be talking about the winners of the Game Awards 2015. There was a lot of cool stuff that happened last night during the award ceremony. Uh, I was really having a great time actually live tweeting during the actual show and actually seeing all the winners and giving my reactions and impressions to some of the world premieres and all the cool stuff that was going on overall. This year, I really enjoyed myself more so than in previous years. I agreed with a lot of the winners that were actually being uh, honored at the award show. I loved some of the cool moments and the shenanigans and the tributes that were all there during this year's Game Awards event. So, I'm going to go through some of the winners here, kind of mention a couple of my, uh, what was it, thoughts and impressions of some of the actual games that ended up winning awards at the show, and talk about some cool moments that I thought made this year's Game Awards show that much more special. So, I have the list right in front of me here on my computer. Best Family Game ended up going to Super Mario Maker. Excellent choice. If that game didn't win, I was really pulling for Splatoon to actually take that actual honor. But um, I kind of understand why they gave that to Super Mario Maker. It's a fun game. It's been resonating a lot with a lot of different families and pretty much throughout everybody that owns a Wii U at this point. It's a different type of experience, unique, and a little bit much more so than Splatoon. So since Splatoon didn't end up winning that award, I'm glad that Super Mario Maker got it. But Best fighting game ended up going to Mortal Kombat X. Now, personally for me, I was pulling for Guilty Gear Zerd Sign to actually win this award, but I can understand why Mortal Kombat X ended up taking it, because not only is Mortal Kombat a little bit more mainstream and out there in the public eye, it's a much more bigger brand than Guilty Gear Zerd. Guilty Gear is a much more hardcore niche uh, fighting game for that particular audience. So it makes more sense that Mortal Kombat, are, you know, would be out there more with everybody else and actually get that award. And also, we ended up getting a world premiere trailer for some new characters that are coming to Mortal Kombat X, including a Xenomorph, so we're going to have legit Alien vs. Predator matchups. Also, Leatherface, which is very cool, and a couple other characters here and there. Besides that, best multiplayer game ended up going to Splatoon. Now, to be honest with you, I was very much certain that Destiny or maybe Halo or Call of Duty was going to take this actual war because those seem to be the bigger games overall as far as, like, you know, notoriety and as far as, like, you know, the audience behind them. But I'm glad that Splatoon won it, and I was really pulling for that because I think that Splatoon is an awesome multiplayer experience. It's a very unique game and really justifies a purchase of owning a Wii U. So, very glad that that game ended up winning. So, I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, best handheld... A uh, mobile game ended up going to Lara Croft Go, okay, or Tomb Raider Go or Lara Croft Go, however you want to call it. I was for certain that Fallout Shelter was going to win this category. Now, don't get me wrong, there's been there, that whole category had a lot of weird kind of choices in it and such, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people thought that uh, was it Fallout Shelter was going to win as well. But and I really kind of don't understand why they gave that uh, was it gave this game the actual award. I haven't played Lara Croft Go myself, so they might know something completely that I don't from having played it. But it is interesting, uh, an interesting pick nonetheless. So moving on from there, best esports team goes to uh, uh, Optic Gaming. Again, I'm not really a big esports guy. You know, granted, I, I catch up a little bit here and there on competitive gaming, but glad that those guys ended up winning. And best esports player of the year goes to Kenny uh, Shrub. I, I can't really pronounce that. Kenny Shrub or Kenny S is like his nickname. So that's pretty cool. Uh, best esports game of the year goes to Counter Strike Global Offensive. So. Again, there's a number of different games that they probably could have went with. Dota, League of Legends, the list goes on. So, again, not big esports guy, so let's move on from there. Uh, most anticipated game goes to No Man's Sky. Now, I was really for certain that The Last Guardian was going to take this. I was pretty sure because I haven't looked at the list of games that were there. Not a lot of games there that I thought that really people were really heavily excited for, except for The Last Guardian and No Man's Sky. So it kind of makes sense that No Man's Sky got it. That game's been germinating for a while, and it's been looking good every time that they actually show us a new uh, trailer for that particular game. Uh, besides that, uh, best narrative goes to Her Story. Now, I didn't play Her Story. A lot of people say a lot of great things about it. It seems a very like a very unique experience. I'm definitely going to check it out at some point. Uh, best trending gamer. Now, this one, again, if you saw my predictions vlog from yesterday, you guys will definitely know that I was pulling for Greg Miller to actually win the award, and I'm so glad that he actually won. This is awesome, okay? Not only was Greg, like, really campaigning for the award show and really putting it out there for people to vote for him, and it really goes to show you, like, how awesome and hardcore and really all-in his audience is during stuff like this, but, again, it's just, he's just an awesome dude that really, he loves video games, and he has the best or he had, I should say, had the best acceptance speech that I've seen at the award ceremony, period. In all the years 
that I followed the Game Awards when it was known as the Spike VGAs and such. He literally has the best acceptance speech out of everybody. Hands down, everybody on social media was talking about it, really giving him a lot of props. He thanked developers for making games. And that's something that's not only humbling, but that's something that everybody should take a lot of example from. Because granted, a lot of his audience, a lot of his success is due to the games that, that these developers actually make. It was a real nice message and a real nice thing for him to actually go and really put the honor back to, towards the game developers despite him winning the award. So that's very cool. Glad that you won, buddy. Really awesome, Greg. I owe you a big hug next time that I see you. So besides that, best indie game goes to Rocket League. Now, I know there was some moneyness here and there about Ori and the Blind Forest not being necessarily an indie game. I had to look it up and it ended up being that, again, Moon Studios is the indie developer even though the game is published by Microsoft. And I really would have wanted uh, Ori and the Blind Forest to win, but I could definitely understand why Rocket League won. Rocket League is a fantastic, fantastic game. Again, it's highly addicting. I remember reviewing that for The Coalition. That game is awesome, so glad that that game won. Uh, best sports, uh, it also takes best sports game as best, uh, what is it, best racing game. Again, goes to Rocket League. Hands down, again, it's, it's racing and sports that kind of mesh together and it just makes something awesome. Something that, like, you wouldn't expect to actually work very well. It's very similar to Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts takes Square Enix, uh, characters from Final Fantasy and Disney characters and puts them together. On paper, that doesn't sound like it would work. The same thing with Rocket League. Sports, like soccer and racing, you know, anything that you can find like a traditional arcade racer and puts them together and it surprisingly works very well. So that ended up walking with, walking away with two awards. That's really awesome. So. Games for impact. Games for impact was the next category. Goes to Life is Strange. I don't really understand why you know that category exists. I, I I know they kind of explained it, which these are games that really try to make a positive change for society and try to really spread a positive message and all do this other stuff. Again, a lot of moneyness in the messaging there, but it's pretty cool that that game ended up getting honored for an award. So. Uh, best fan creation was Portal Stories. Again, I haven't really played that, and it's very cool that at least some sort of fan or community-oriented game is getting some recognition at a game award show. That makes a lot of sense to me. I want to see more of that in some sort of capacity here or there at next year's show. Uh, Developer of the Year goes to CD Projekt Red. Now, I know Kojima Productions was actually uh, included in this category, and I was really surprised that they didn't actually give the nod to them. But CD Projekt Red did a lot of great stuff with The Witcher 3. They really came from left field, left field, left field and actually brought their A game to the table and really got uh, was a lot of the recognition they so thoroughly deserved. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, best art direction goes to Ori and the Blind Forest. Again, I love Ori and the Blind Forest, one of my most favorite games this year. When I remember reviewing it, that was the game that made me buy an Xbox One. Surprising to hear that, I know, but still, that game is just uh, amazing. The art style and the, the visuals in that game are fantastic. If you haven't played that game, definitely go pick it up on Xbox One or Xbox Live. And I know it's on PC and you can play that game in 4K, which I can only imagine how good that game looks. So, definitely well deserved. Um, best action adventure game. now. This goes to Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Now that's great, I'm so cool with that, okay? And I know that Kiefer Sutherland actually accepted the award because he was there, he was, he was one of the presenters, did all this other cool stuff. But here's where everybody kind of like got alarmed during the show because when Jeff Keighley actually blew the whistle and actually, you know, opened up about Kojima being at the show. Apparently, Konami prevented Hideo Kojima from actually attending the show because of all the legal stuff that's been going on with Konami right now and him and Kojima Productions. They prevented him from actually going to the show to accept the award. Apparently, according to Jeff Keighley, he wanted to be there, but since Konami was being a bunch of bastards with all this, again, this, this whole debacle has gone to the ridiculous side of things, he wasn't able to show up and actually grab the award. Right now, no matter what goes on, no matter what the real story is at this point, you know, going on with Konami and Hideo Kojima, Konami looks like the worst right now in everybody's eyes. Everybody on social media was upset that they wanted to see Kojima there. Everybody thought that he was gonna be make like a surprise visit. And I was pretty sure, like even after this news, people kept saying like, oh, he's gonna show up at some point. You know, he's gonna, you know, pull a 180 and pull a, like a surprise appearance like what he normally does with all his gimmicks and his kind of like shenanigans and such. Apparently that wasn't the case. This is legit serious. So Jeff Keighley seems really down about it. I don't blame him. He loves Hideo Kojima. He even brought a signed copy of Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain with him to the event. I saw him tweeting about it on Twitter, you know, posting a picture up. And that would have been awesome, but I guess that goes to show you the business side of gaming sometimes could kind of muddied up uh, was it the actual fun of everything going on. So 
thoughts go out to Hideo Kojima. You know, it really sucks some of the stuff that he's going through right now. I really hope we really get an explanation of what went down very soon. Apparently, his non-compete clause ends this month. So it's December 2015 now at this point. It already is coming up if it didn't already end. So hopefully somebody tells the story of what went down because I'm pretty sure everybody really wants to know what's going on at this point. So moving on from there. Best score, best soundtrack also goes to Metal Gear Solid 5, The Fan of Pain. They had a little, pre uh, what is it, performance there for quiet steam of the, of, from the actual game. Uh, I would have expected them to do the main theme, which is called Sins of the Father, which is a really awesome, uh, was it, theme song, a really awesome track that's part of that game. If you haven't listened to it, definitely look it up on YouTube. It's very, very cool. But I would have expected them to actually perform that, but really cool that the game actually got the best soundtrack. It has a lot of great songs in that OST. Uh, best uh, performance goes to Vivia uh, Surfer. I'm really pronouncing her name wrong. So uh, Viva, Viva, was it Viva? Viva Safer, okay, from her story. She did a really awesome job. It was a surprise win because there was a lot of other big names in that category, including Mark Hamill and Kiefer Sutherland. So that was pretty cool that her story got some recognition. There was a really moving acceptance speech by the by the actual winner there that was from the actual creator of the game who couldn't apparently couldn't be there or whatnot, but he actually wrote down some notes and stuff to give to her to actually tell everybody. I thought that was really cool, very classy, very nice for the actual win. And then finally, Game of the Year. Game of the Year goes to The Witcher 3. Now, I was pulling for Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain to actually win. To me, that's my Game of the Year so far of 2015. That's like the game that I feel did the best out of all this year. But a lot of people really are pulling for The Witcher 3. So I think that it's fine. I, I really don't have necessarily a problem with that. I think that CD Projekt Red did an amazing job with The Witcher, and I'm glad that they're getting the recognition of what they deserve. Even though I disagree with it, still really awesome that they won, and I still think that it was handled very well at the Game Awards, and it was very cool. Again, there was a lot of big games that came out this year. Again, in that uh, actual nomination, that, that grouping, you had Metal Gear Solid 5, The Witcher 3, Fallout 4, Super Mario Maker. It, it was just a complete awesome list of games that anybody, you could have chose any one of those games and everybody would have been cool with it. So. With that being said though, overall, the show for the Game Awards 2015. Oh, one more thing I have to mention before I wrap this up. The tribute to Satori Iwata from Reggie fils and I after, uh, I believe it was after Splatoon 1 uh, for best multiplayer. Uh, it was very cool, I thought it was very classy, very emotional, and I, even Jeff Keighley got in on it, and as far as like, you know, opened up about Satori Iwata, you know, because again, we lost a legend this year, lost a great man, and it really affected everybody, and I thought that was very moving, it was a very good way to honor the guy's memory, and it was very cool, I thought it was very good, even though obviously we don't want to see a lot of memoriam type of stuff at the Game Awards show in general. We definitely don't want to see a lot of that next year. It was still very classy, and I think it was handled very well by Keeley and the rest of his crew. So that was very cool. A lot of good moments there overall. And again, like I was about to wrap up, great show overall this year for 2015. To me, I think it's the best one yet. I think there was a lot of great moments of which we had during the course of the entire show. Greg's speech, uh, Satori Wada's, uh, what is it, uh, honoring, you know, a memoriam and the speech given by Reggie fils there. Uh, CD Projekt Red uh, accepting the award for Game of the Year for The Witcher 3. Uh, a lot of the musical performances were pretty cool. Even the ending for Dead Mouse was, I thought, was pretty awesome. So, overall, great show this year. So, with that being said, guys, that's all I got for you. Put a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think about this year's The Game Awards for 2015. And I will talk to you guys again real soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody.